Okay, so with orbitals come orbital spins. Here we have eigenvalue equations for the electron spin angular momentum. So, surprise, surprise, electrons have angular momentum. These are the spin orbitals. Um, these two, these, um, this set of equations uh, memorize not going to be more than a couple points here or there. It's, it's really just definitional. Uh, this this is the uh, this denotes the spin. Uh, this this denotes it's uh, this is the operator. It can be I squared or it can be z. This is analogous if you remember. Uh, flashback to the L squared and LZ operators. These are interchangeable as well. Now, what's really important from this, the take home message from this part is that, and pay attention, all wave functions must be anti symmetric under the interchange of any two electrons. Let me zoom out so you can see this. All wave functions must be anti symmetric under the interchange of any two electrons. Interchange, just, that just means if you do something with them, like multiply them. So for example, if you have the product of two spin orbitals, where this is one spin orbital, and this is another spin orbital for this overall function, the interaction is these two being multiplied. So here's one and here's two. So if you multiply these, this is an inner interchange. And then this overall wave function must be anti-symmetric if you do this. So this is how you can simplify it. Anti-symmetric, that, that, that just means if you have if you if you have uh, x1, x2 anti-symmetric will be the negative x2, x1. So you just switch the order and you change the sign. Koopman's approximation says that orbital energies are approximately equal to the energy needed to ionize the atom from that orbital. So this is useful if you have Like helium, for example, the first ionization of helium, energy of helium, 3.9 Hartree's, and your second one is about 2.0, about 2 Hartree's. These are your ionization energies. These will be approximately equal to the energy of the orbital. So if you remember from, uh, from way back, a couple of minutes ago, we talked about orbital of the energy, uh, excuse me, energy of the orbital. That's where this comes from. You can use this to find approximately, about, these aren't exact, but about the right ionization energies. And, and it's to take it away from that orbital. So it's this specific n. So this has a specific n, and this has another n, one, one and two. This approximation is also not exact because it lacks taking into account distortion. But generally, what you want to do to make up for this is to use the cation energy minus the neutral energy. And then this will give you a, a much better a, uh, much better value. Now now uh, to connect connect these uh, spin orbitals with what we've been talking about to make sure that you have anti-symmetric wave functions, you use the S determinant. 
Let me see that abbreviation, CSDTER. CSDTER turns out to be the Slater determinant for anti-symmetric interchange. All this means is that you want to take it from this wave function that uses these spatial arrangements, spin arrangements, and make it anti-symmetric where you where this you change the sign and you flip the order. So to make this anti-symmetric, flip the sign and you change the order. Using a linear combination of both Hartree products, you get this, the Slater determinant to be this, where this is just your normalization factor, standard 1 over root 2, and then you just use your 2 by 2 determinant method, product minus product, equals to 0. So, quick recap. Eigenvalue equations for electron spin angular momentum. Just know these. All wave functions must be anti-symmetric under the interchange of any two electrons. Use this uh, Slayer determinant to find that. Koopman's approximation, good for figuring out orbital energies and how they relate to ionization energy. And then using the Slayer determinant to get a proper anti-symmetric interchange.